Hello and welcome to another Stronghold Feature Spotlight covering something very near and dear to our hearts. I am of course talking about siege weapons. Epic castle sieges have been part of the Stronghold DNA for 20 years now, and in the case of Stronghold Warlords, we're adding gunpowder into the mix for a total of 10 unique siege weapons. As with our 16 unit types, the 10 siege weapons in Stronghold Warlords will be a mix of new gunpowder filled contraptions, but also series staples capable of launching a 90 kilogram stone over 300 meters. The team wants Stronghold Warlords to be the most fully featured castle besieging game in the series, both in terms of castle defense and attack, and that means giving you loads of tactical options. This means we'll be allowing players to blow apart castle walls with gunpowder, knock down crenellations with catapults, climb ladders, dock siege towers, or just burn the whole thing to the ground. So today it gives me great pleasure to reveal four siege weapons you'll be using to obliterate castle defenses in Stronghold Wars this year. Just so you know, this will be an ongoing feature series here at Firefly Studios YouTube as we reveal 10 siege weapons coming to the game. So if you haven't subscribed, do that already, hit the notification bell, you won't miss a thing. People are coming to the castle. Here comes Bessie. Well, not exactly. While we might send our beloved stronghold bovine over castle walls courtesy of a handy trebuchet. Hope they're like beef shit. <laughs> right. Crikey! Warlord's Fire Ox is a nameless, if brave, beast. Along with the Fire Lancer, this gunpowder-based siege weapon is listed direct from the pages of history. Inspired by the famous Siege of Dian in China, fought as part of the Jin Song Walls in 1132 AD. The first recorded use of both the Fire Lance and a slightly less explosive version of our Fire Ox, this siege took place between a group of rebels under the command of Li Heng and Song defenders led by the city prefect Chen Gui. Chen released a drove of oxen, enraged by setting their tails on fire, and led a squad of fire lancers out to take out the enemy siege towers. There are earlier references to fire ox too, with records of their use in 279 BC in the siege of the city of Jimo. Tian Dan, the general of the state of Qi, was said to have broken the siege by taking a herd of 1,000 oxen, fitted with sharp daggers on their horns and reeds soaked in oil to their tails, sending them off in the direction of the siege lines. It is these two historical events that inspired the final design of our Fire Ox in Stronghold Warlords, which has sharp weapons, a fiery tail, and some added pots of gunpowder for good measure. Recruitable at the siege camp, and with enough upgrades, your friendly neighborhood Ox Warlord. Oh, what we can do, I'm gonna upgrade the, you can ask the Fire Oxen for more Fire Oxen, which I know you guys wanna see. The Fire Ox is your suicidal answer to a variety of tactical situations. Relatively cheap to recruit, the Fire Ox is initially slow to move and, honestly, pretty volatile to archer fire. Used to transporting goods between your ox tether and stockpile, you may not think of the oxen as natural battle units. However, a little fire can soon change that. Select a target for the ox and its tail will catch fire, sending the beast into an enraged state, barreling towards the enemy at full speed. At this point, you won't be able to cancel the command or redirect your ox. However, it will do significant damage when it makes contact. Provided you can draw Archer Fire away from the Ox during its approach, this unit will explode on contact. This deals high damage and knockback to any troops, friend or foe, within its area of effect, especially effective against unarmored units like the Tribesman and Archer. This knockback can be useful for halting enemy rush attacks, while the residual fire also makes for a great way to block attacking routes before they can get anywhere near your castle. Just don't leave them unattended, in case a pesky Archer decides to come and ruin your day. Last seen in the main campaign from my previous favourite entry in the series, Stronghold 2, Laddermen can make their long-awaited return in Warlords. That's right, after ending up on the cutting room floor for recent titles, Laddermen are back in all their glory, providing your units with a quick route up and onto enemy ramparts. Like the Fire Ox, Laddermen are defenceless and do little more than slowly move about until they're given a target. At this point, the Laddermen will run towards a specific piece of wall you've selected and place their ladder against it holding it in place for friendly troops to mount. Essentially then, Laddermen are a quick, cheap means of creating a gap in your enemy's defenses. Fast moving and mobile thanks to the wheels at the base of their ladders, Laddermen can be used to surprise your enemy and flood their castle courtyard with your troops. Defending troops can push the ladders away, destroy and burn them, or just blow them apart with gunpowder. A cheaper means of scaling castle walls than the mighty siege tower, Laddermen are weak, cannot fight, and as such are best used in large numbers. 
While they won't explode upon death quite like the Firox, Ladamon are similarly unarmored and vulnerable to archer fire on their approach. If only there was some way to protect them. Manlets will be available in wards to protect your armorless tribesmen, archers, and of course, Ladamon. Perfect for protecting frontline soldiers and siege weapons alike, the humble mantlet has featured in every Stronghold game to date, for good reason. Fitted with an arrow slit, the mantlet allows your units to shoot through and past it while protecting them from archer fire. As such, an effective use of the portable shields is to besiege a heavily defended castle by rushing several of them into archer range with several archers on your front line. Use their protection to level the playing field and wipe enemy archers from castle walls before following up with your ladderman to create an opening in their defences. Now, mantlets, like people, aren't perfect. Their small size means they can only protect small clusters of units, meaning you need quite a few to cover an attacking siege force. Their area of effect works like a bubble around the mantlet, so make sure your troops are close enough to survive. As you might imagine, mantlets are also far less effective at defending against explosive castle defences, meaning you might be better off sacrificing a lone tribesman to set off a bunch of gunpowder traps for the greater good. Mantlets are also quite vulnerable to attacks from heavy siege weapons like the catapult. Speaking of which... While admittedly it's no trebuchet, the catapult is an effective medium range and mobile siege weapon, useful for putting a serious dent into castle walls, towers and gatehouses. A staple of the Stronghold series and medieval warfare in general, catapults are the bread and butter of any successful siege force. This feat of feudal engineering may not be capable of throwing a 90 kg stone 300 meters, but that doesn't mean it should be missing from your army. Cheaper and more mobile than the mighty trebuchet, catapults have an impressive rate of fire and high accuracy for bringing down buildings, defenses, and enemy siege weapons. All the understated catapult needs is a single ammunition type, as its rocks will put a serious dent in any structure, particularly when a group are deployed at once. Able to move as part of an attacking force and adjust on the fly as the battle develops, the catapult sometimes outshines its larger and more popular brother when it comes to mobility and versatility. Both, however, require protection, and the catapult will come undone after sustained attack from missile fire or melee units. Mantlets are a great option for providing protection against archers, while a small unit of fast-moving troops like axemen provide an effective escort and defense against melee attackers. Either way, get your catapults in quick and there'll be a helm's deep sized hole in your enemy's walls before they know it. Is this it? Catapult ready, my lord. Is this all you can conjure, Saruman? According to plan. So there you have it, four very different pieces of siege equipment coming to Stronghold Warlords later this year. Now we are trying to strike a balance between our fascination with the historical uses of gunpowder and the series staples that you know and love. We know the new setting is a big change for core Stronghold fans, so we're hoping that classic units like the Ladderman and features like Fear Factor will keep the Stronghold spirit alive. We'll have even more siege weapons to show off in future videos, including the classic Siege Tower, more gunpowder fueled siege weapons, and of course the mighty Trebuchet. That's right, the superior siege weapon is in fact coming to Stronghold Warlords at launch, packed with new ammunition types and destructive potential. Now, if you'd like to find out more, including when the game will actually be available on Steam, make sure you give us a wish list. It means a huge deal to an indie studio like us. And honestly, for me personally, if I could take over Total War, that would just be like bucket list stuff for me. So please wish list, thanks. Now, as always, if you like the video, make sure you give us a like and subscribe here on Firefly Studios YouTube for more Stronghold Warlords and Roman's Age of Caesar goodness every week.